Hello, friends. Happy Friday. Sorry, uh, couldn't make a video on Wednesday. Planned to do one on Thursday. Didn't. Uh, here I am. <laughs> it's Friday morning. And I wanted to make this video because I, I got some stuff I got to talk about, get off my chest. And this is really a Wednesday ramble topic, but you're getting it Friday. Such is life. So let me grab my lighter. And my coffee. So I wanted to talk about a couple things. Uh, by the way, Haunted Bookshop and the uh, Matches Memorial Friday 7 Ellie. So you, you probably saw that there's this issue with the uh, Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine where you know, the FDA and the federal government has said, you know, don't use that because it's producing blood clots. So, 6.8 million people have been dosed with the J&J &J vaccine. 6.8 million people. There have been six blood clots, six, six people with blood clots. And, you know, we've got to be safe. We don't want people getting blood clots. But, well, that is, you know, six, 6 6.8 million. That is less than a one in a million chance that you're going to get a blood clot. So to put that into perspective, you know, I've got some notes here that I'm, that I'm going to look at. I don't need to put my glasses on. But the, the risk of you getting a blood clot just because you're a human being, just because you're sitting there, just the risk in the general population, the odds of any one of us getting a blood clot is somewhere between one and two in a thousand. So the, the risk is like 0.1 to 0.2% compared to one in a million, less than one in a million. One in a thousand, just because you're a human being. So what is the actual increase in risk going from, you know, one in a thousand, and now you're one in a thousand plus one in a million? It's a very, 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 very tiny increase. And to put that further into perspective, what is the risk uh, of, of other drugs? Well, the, the one that, you know, is got a very well-recognized and high incidence of uh, blood clot production is hormonal birth control. And that risk is somewhere around two to three in a thousand. That's, you know, it's, it's higher than the general population, so there is definitely a risk there. But they're prescribed, and, you know, they, you monitor the people, you give them the warning signs of a blood clot, and they go on about their lives. And... For the most part, there's not an issue. So you're going from one in a thousand to maybe two to three in a thousand. So it's a significant increase in risk. Going from one in a thousand to one plus one in a, one in a thousand plus one in a million is a very, very, very tiny increase in risk. Now here's the really important part. What is the risk of getting a blood clot if you've got COVID-19 and you've been put in the hospital? So this is ICU patients. These are, these are pretty sick people. But there's an increase in their risk compared to the general ICU population. Uh, it's like 20 to 30 percent. 20 to 30 percent. That's 20 to 30 out of 100. 200 to 300 out of 1,000. So we've been using 1,000. You got a super high risk of getting a blood clot if you get COVID. Okay. So why are we slowing down the J&J &J vaccine? Why, why, is the, why is the media going nuts about this saying, oh, the, the end is nigh, uh, the J&J &J vaccine? You know, completely ignoring the fact that we got two others that are you know, working just fine. Um, there is more misinformation about these vaccines and about COVID and everything else than I think is reasonable. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be... I'm not trying to diminish what the risk is. 
I'm also not trying to enhance what the risk is for COVID. I'm just saying that there ain't very good information out there and we have no idea what to believe. And this is a huge problem. This is just a huge problem. And I'm sorry I'm ranting a bit, but, and I warn you, I'm about to put on my tinfoil hat. But you know, I've been talking for a long time about the concept of social programming and the fact that we are being programmed, we are being slowly led down a path to something. And I don't know what that something is, but I don't like it. And fear is a huge motivator. And we've been motivated for the past year plus because we're afraid of catching a virus. And I'm sick of it. I think a lot of people are sick of it. Why are they doing it? Why are they continuing to fear monger rather than pointing to the positive? You, know, you get a much lower chance of getting the virus if you get the darn vaccine. Why are you focusing on this tiny, tiny risk of a blood clot? when you should be focusing on getting people to actually get that damn injection. It doesn't make any sense. Why are they doing it? Now we know the media is colluding with, with the, the Democrats in government. We know that, that's obvious. Anybody that doesn't believe that is quite frankly stupid because it's very, very obvious. There's a ton of information pointing to that. It's, it's just incontrovertible. We have recordings of people at CNN actually saying that they are a propaganda uh, network and that they are choosing very carefully what they decide to report in order to uh, support a particular uh, form of government. This is known. Of course, you don't see it on the news, but you know, so that's the world we live in. You, you got to look for your news other, other elsewhere, and you got to check your facts. And we, we've been through all that. And by the way, I did check the facts. The facts that I just gave you in terms of the risks all came from uh, the CDC website. And uh, assuming we can trust that, I think I think we can. I think we can. But so why are they doing it? Well, I got an email from my friend uh, Tamper J. Uh, this was a couple days ago. And he said, hey, you should, you should check out this uh, bill that's been introduced in the Senate. It's uh, Senate Bill 411. And I researched it a bit. It's called Mamas Act, M-O-M-M-A-S. Uh, I'll put a link below to the, to the bill. It was originally introduced back in 2019 and uh, didn't go anywhere because 2019 was a better year. Uh, now it's been reintroduced, and from what I can see, it's essentially in its same form. Uh, it's in the Senate. It has a large amount of Democratic support. Probably not much Republican support, but that's, you know. And this bill is ostensibly aimed at uh, the health of mothers and pregnant women. And that's important. You know, we, we, want, we want to protect those people and keep them healthy and all that. Great. Well, in the middle of this bill, they have a section called Equity in Tobacco Taxes. And what that means is we're charging a buttload of taxes on cigarettes, and we're not charging enough on pipes, cigars, uh, smokeless tobacco, roll your own tobacco. Uh, we're not making enough money off of those. Or we're not controlling those people effectively. So we got to raise the tax. And it's an enormous increase. And, and absolutely, and keep in mind, this is federal level taxes. Okay, this has nothing to do with what the states are doing independent of this. This will happen for everyone in the US. Their plan is to go from the current federal tax on pipe tobacco, which is $2.83 a pound. That's it, three bucks a pound. When you buy a pound of tobacco, $3 of that's going to the federal government. They want to increase that to $49.56 a pound. $49.56 a pound. 
that means the next time you go to buy, if, if this bill passes, you go to buy a pound of haunted bookshop, which is currently roughly 40 bucks. It's going to cost you $90. Is that good? Are you happy about that? More importantly, do you know about that? And if you don't know about that, why don't you? Why don't you? I didn't know about it. You know, thank, thank you, Tamper Jay, for pointing it out to me. We don't know about it because we're not getting information. We're not, we're so, at least we're supposed to be so focused on, oh, God, I got to put my mask on and I got to get a vaccine, but I can't get that vaccine. And now I'm going to have to wait. And it, it's taking our mind off of other things. And this is an important other thing. I will put the information below on this bill. Look at it. Uh, it'll, you can get a PDF of it and search it. Just search it for tobacco because it's a pretty long bill and it's got a lot of stuff in it. And I didn't read the whole thing. Uh, but just, you know, open up the PDF, press Control F, type tobacco, and you'll, you'll find it. And then get in touch with your senators. we got to do this. This is really, really important, and, and I have not heard anything about it. So maybe it's me. You know, maybe, maybe it's me because I have... I've gotten so annoyed by the fear and the, and the, the fear mongering and the ridiculous lack of information, the fake, uh, I hate to say fake news because it's a joke, but it is fake news. The fake statistics, the fake science, you know, well, we're going to follow the science. Bull crap. You don't even know what the science is. Nobody does. They're making it up. <laughs> They're making it up as they go along. So, Check out this bill right to your senators. Don't let this slip. This is important. Or maybe you want to spend 90 bucks a pound for tobacco. I don't know. Uh, they've been trying to do it for a long time. And, you know, they, they got control. They got control. And now they're going to take advantage of it. And they're going to try to do the things that they've been trying to do for a long time. And this is just one example. And the minority of you that are happy with the way things are, enjoy paying $90 a pound for tobacco. Ah, thank you for listening to my rant. <laughs> Tonight on the live stream, we've got Phil Rivera, uh, pipe maker Phil Rivera, well known in, on YouTube, and I'm very happy that we're going to be talking. for a chat with Phil Rivera. Beyond that, uh, I'm going to finish my pipe and get back to work. I really appreciate you guys listening to me and letting me uh, blow my stack a little bit because it's very therapeutic for me. Thank you guys. Take care and I'll see you tonight.